So welcome everybody. My name is Jeremy Preston and I work in the marketing group at Illumina based out of San Diego. Today we've got a really exciting agenda. We've got two really interesting presentations that I think really highlight our technology. Uh, we've got a, a range of different technologies we're going to talk about today and really focus on the fact that we have integrated solutions across our product portfolios. To kick off with, we're going to have David Miller, who's a sequencing manager at the Queensland Centre for Molecular Genomics, University of Queensland in Australia. And he's going to talk about profiling pancreatic cancer using rapid sequencing technology. And then following him is Sheila Fisher, whom a lot of you already know really well. And Sheila's the Director of Operations and Development of the Genomics Platforms at the Broad Institute. And Sheila's going to talk about the ultimate sequencing sandbox, uh, new applications using Illumina technology. And a lot of what we talk about today is applications and technology and how they link together. And I'm going to start off with by giving you an overview of some of Illumina's current technology developments we've made and really try and give you a glimpse of what we're doing going forward as well because we often know we get a lot of questions about what can we do going forward and we've got some pretty exciting stuff up our sleeves. To kick off with, I want to just state that Illumina sequencing just keeps getting easier and easier. Uh, we've made really, really um, strong attempts to make this much easier for you to use in the lab to try and integrate our systems. And I put this picture up, and we show this a fair bit, but it shows where we were in circa Jan 2009. And there was a lot of peripheral equipment that you needed to get through sequencing. And this was the flagship product. This was a leading sequencer at the time, our genome analyzer. And you can see there's a bunch of equipment you need. And it, was, it wasn't exactly nice, but it served a purpose for the time. Bring on HiSeq 2000, we launched this platform in January 2010 and we started to integrate a lot of technology together into the one platform. And by doing this, we simplified the sequencing workflow, we took steps out of the workflow, we merged equipment and apparatus into one instrument and just made it so much simpler. And I think a lot of you in the room are probably using this platform, it's been incredibly successful. But wait, there's more. We launched HiSeq, uh, MySeq uh, a year ago. and this then took it another step and it put everything into one box. We took our cluster generation step, which needed a separate instrument, and put it into one benchtop system. And once again, this platform has been hugely successful. I've got a shadow there. And then, as I said, we keep pushing the envelope here and we're happy to say that now we have two platforms. We've done the same thing on HiSeq now. So we launched the 2500 several weeks ago and it's a platform in its rapid mode that now incorporates cluster generation on the platform itself. So once again, you have a single instrument workflow for both MySeq and both HiSeq. So a lot's happened, and we're going to keep pushing this going forward. To give you an overview of the sequencing process or the workflow in general, there's three major components. There's the front end, which is sample prep. And we have a range of solutions for that, from DNA, from RNA, to target resequencing. And we've worked very hard to, to make that as simple as possible, as streamlined as possible, so that it's not a barrier for you running sequencing samples and getting your work done. Obviously, in the middle, there's the industry-leading NGS instruments that we provide. And at the back end of it, this is, this is something that shouldn't be brushed away. It's informatics. And I think you all know that it's a bit of a, a pain point. And we're working very hard to simplify that through our base space solution, the storage, processing, analysis, collaboration. I'll come back to that a bit later. But it's really important from our perspective and also your perspective that the entire workflow is integrated and simple and easy to use. And spanning all of that, we're not just a technology company that sells boxes, et cetera. We also have a services solution. We have the Illumina Genome Network for whole human genomes and also our fast track services. And these services offer the whole range of sample prep, sequencing, and analysis as well. So we're trying to put the complete package together to take the guesswork out of sequencing and make it as easy to use as possible. Really exciting news for us was the launch of the HiSeq 2500. This was a few weeks ago, and HiSeq's our flagship sequencer. In its high output mode, it generates up to 600 gigabases of output. It can be as low as 50, depending on the read length that you use. Currently, the high output mode has 2 by 100 base pairs as a maximum read length. And you can see here the standard flow cell we use. It's eight lanes or eight channels. And this sequence is really optimized for grunt work. It's applications that require lots of sequencing output. And the beauty of it is you can load up samples on it, you can switch it on, and you can get through a whole bunch of sequencing on this um, really easily without having to in interfere with the machine. You just turn it on and go away, and a huge amount of sequencing output is produced. However, we got a lot of feedback from our owners of HiSeq over the years 
but you want to have flexibility and more operational efficiency. Often there's projects that are smaller that you don't want to switch a thing on for 11 days. You'd rather get these done more quickly. And to that, we launched the 2500. And this has a rapid run mode where you can, at the flick of a switch, toggle between a high output mode or rapid run mode, which delivers less output in a faster amount of time. So the output of this ranges from 10G, if you're doing very short single reads, up to 180G if you're doing 2x150. The other news here is we increased the read length on this platform to pair 150 to try and enable better applications like de for, for de novo sequencing, et cetera. And this is really geared towards smaller projects, quick results. An example of that is you can do a human genome at paired 100 in about a day. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute because there's an important uh, example of that that I think demonstrates the power of this technology. With respect to applications and flexibility this gives you, we now have a system that can be switched on for the grant work. It can be switched on multiple times for much smaller projects or smaller samples, smaller, smaller studies. An example of that is RNA-seq. In rapid run mode, you could do 24 samples in 16 hours. Or you could do a much bigger project and use the high output mode and do 120 samples in five days. On the same note, a 30x human genome, you could do one in about a day in rapid mode, or you can do five samples in about 11 days. So it really gives you this flexibility that you didn't have before. Here's an example I wanted to talk about. It's a really powerful demonstration of what sequencing can do and what I think it's going to do in the future. And this is courtesy of Stephen Kingsmore and his group at Children's Mercy, Mercy Hospital. They've done a lot of work on um, neonates, and it's, I think it's something that touches the heart when, you, when a, a neonate presents with all sorts of abnormalities. It's every parent's worst nightmare. But what they've done is a neonate presented at five months that had severe developmental regression and seizures. They prepped the samples, sent them to us. This is before we actually commercially made the HiSeq 2500 available. And we ran these samples for them on our 2500s internally. And within 50 hours, they'd identified a novel gene, uh, a novel variant in a gene linked to copper metabolism, and also confirmed diagnosis of Menke's disease. And this is really important because when babies are born, they have problems. It often takes days, weeks, months to find out what's wrong with them and what treatment you can get them on. So this is a glimpse of where sequencing is heading. And, Stephen's, and, and someone, um, Daryl Dinwiddie from Stephen's group is going to be talking about this at our second workshop tomorrow. So if you have, have the time, please go and see that because it's really exciting stuff they're doing. Obviously, this tr translated to our first HiSeq 2500 um, publication, which was actually before the instrument was released, which is pretty cool from our perspective to see the technology getting published before it's even um, commercially available. And it got picked up by a lot of press. It, it really made the rounds, and I think it started to bring sequencing into the general, the general populace like it hasn't been before. Switching gears now to MySeq, we launched this platform just over a year ago. It's been incredibly successful. It's taken all the technology we bundled up in our previous systems and put it in a convenient benchtop box that's super easy to use. We launched this at about 1.5 G of output, 7 million clusters, and a read length of 2 by 150. And then several months ago, we took this up. And we pushed the bounds again, and we went to over 8 gigabases based on about 15 million clusters. And we extended the read length. We borrowed some of the technology from HiSeq. We incorporated dual surface imaging into MySeq to increase the amount of density we have on flow cells, or the amount of clusters we can resolve. We also improved the read length. We went much longer. And we think this really enables applications such as de novo sequencing, microbes, et cetera, to be much, a much easier workflow with uh, longer reads. We're hearing some pretty good reports. Um, users out there are getting well in excess of 10 gigabases on MySeq at, at these specs. So once again, people are pushing our systems probably harder than we are. But it doesn't stop there. We plan to take it further again. We see huge extensibility in SBS. And in the back half of next year, we plan to have MySeq at about 15 gigabases of output, 25 million clusters, and a read length of 2 by 300. So once again, we think this brings on more applications. We think it starts to enable RNA-seq-like app counting applications to be done on MySeq. And also, obviously, going longer with reads always translates to easier alignments and better data analysis or aligning and assembling genomes. And it doesn't stop there. We often, I heard just recently about uh, sequences potentially being sent to Mars to sequence Martian genomes, et cetera. And we internally actually refer to, when we stretch ourselves and push the bounds of our sequencing, we refer to these as moonshot runs. So it's not far off the, off the mark here, but 
Internally, R&D have pushed MySQL um, a long way, and I'm showing a run here that's in excess of 20G. It's 22G. It's 26.5 million clusters, and you can see the reads there. Read 1 is 450 bases, and read 2 is 375 bases, so over 800 bases of total sequence that was produced. And I like the fact that we haven't really pushed this yet, and the quality is already excellent. 30 over 70% of the bases here, the reads, are over have um, Q values of over 30, which is really excellent data quality. And looking at the error rate, 1.7% for read 1, 2.4% for read 2. We could push that down, but I want to let you know that's not, that's not far off where HiSeq was a few months before we launched the platform. So just to give you confidence that we can deliver on what we, what we promise, and the 15G we think is something that's very achievable uh, next year. I also want to just put a plug in here. MySeq just won a five-year FDA contract to identify bugs in food. So the goal is to actually sequence uh, food-related pathogen outbreaks, et cetera. And this was a, a cross-platform bake-off that MySeq came out on top with. And uh, I think it's a sign of things to come where sequencing technology is going. But I think it's a huge endorsement of the platform. Switching gears now to sample prep, obviously we can't just stop at sequencing instruments. We have to start to address the front end and make that simple. And we've launched a range of sample prep solutions across the DNA front. Uh, we launched our next era products quite recently, and the uptake of those has been really successful. Ultra-fast sample prep, very low input amounts. We're also making, launching a TrueSeq PCR free, which I'll come to in the next slide, and our next era mate pair, uh, which is couples next era, and our TrueSeq technology to give you much bigger inserts a much faster workflow, a lower DNA input amounts, um, and also longer reads with mate pair systems. On the target of a sequencing front, we have TrueSeq Custom Amplicon, which both of our speakers following me are going to spend some time talking about. But we've pushed that to, it's a highly multiplexed assay, and we've got that at 1536 plex, which means in a plate of 96 samples, every sample can deliver 1536 amplicons, which is over 36,000 amplicons in a single plate processed at once. And on the other side, we have our hybrid capture-based technologies, TrueSeq, Exome, and Custom Enrichment. And we coupled NextEra with that to make it even simpler. So we knocked about a day off the assay by replacing the TrueSeq DNA prep portion with NextEra to drive down the input from a microgram to 50 nanograms and to make it a much faster and easier assay. And then, of course, RNA and regulation. TrueSeq small RNA and TrueSeq RNA have been hugely popular. And recently, we launched a TrueSeq stranded RNA uh, to get directionality in your RNA-seq projects. And also, that's FFP compatible. So you can now tackle some of the samples that were just too difficult to sequence. And lastly, TrueSeq chip. We had a lot of requests to make TrueSeq work with chip. And I'm happy to say it does now. And that's available. So I told you I was going to briefly talk about PCR-free sample prep. This is coming soon. And we think this is going to give you the highest quality genome. And it's actually going to be quite a quick assay. It's about half a day. And just drawing attention to uh, the left-hand side of the, the slide here, comparing it to current TrueSeq, some replicates there in gray, PCR-free really is outperforming this. And the beauty of it is it, it tackles the hard-to-get regions. We call these our classes of evil. They're high GC, high AT, et cetera. And these, these are regions that are just difficult to sequence. And so with the PCR-free technology, we can get better coverage of these reason, regions, increase library diversity, but also reduce gaps. So if you look at the right-hand side, you'll see an alignment of PCR-free versus current TrueSeq, and we're closing a gap significantly there. We're actually removing the gap completely. And this is actually currently offered in our fast-track services at the moment. So coming towards the end here, we're not stopping there. We want to address the back end as well and make this as simple as possible for you. So we have some new tools for faster and easier data analysis. The first thing here is we're reducing the Q-score representation. And by that, I mean we're actually making the, the file that summarizes Q-scores much smaller, so there's less data to store. And we're compressing that as well. To give an example of what that does, look at the can there. A current 30x human genome build is, was about 110 gigabytes that you've got to do something with. You've got to store it somewhere. And when we do this and we reduce the Q-score representation, we compress the files, we can push that down to 48 gigabytes. So big, big decrease, it translates to faster upload and much easier to manage and store your data. This is available through base space. Another new development is our new um, alignment software called Isaac. Compared to other aligners available at the moment, this is four to six x faster. 
And it's also, it also runs on standard hardware. So it means that you can get through a 30x genome on standard computing hardware in a few hours. So we think we're, trying, we're speeding up the back end as well, because there's no use being able to make sequencing fast on the front end, make the instruments faster, and then have a bottleneck on the back end. We have to make sure the whole process is streamlined and quick. And lastly, base space. It's our plug and play genomic cloud solution. It has uh, an environment for processing and analyzing data. It has an application space where third party vendors host applications there, and you can use different applications at your own will. And also we have, it's a storage function. Like cloud computing globally and other technologies, you can upload data to, there, to it and store it without, ha without having to spend the money on the infrastructure to store data yourself. We give away one free terabyte of storage just for signing up. And to give an example, this is about five human genome runs on a HiSeq, or if you're running your MySeq at twice a week, it's about a year and a half's worth of MySeq runs. So it's not an insignificant amount of storage. And if you want to know more about this, please go to our Illumina Lounge. We have live base space apps being demonstrated there. Now, it wouldn't be an Illumina presentation at ASHG if we didn't talk about microarrays. And we've been hugely involved in this for a long time. And our um, industry leading assay, the Infidium assay, has driven a huge amount of research and publications. I'm happy to say that we have new products coming out there as well. We have the human core and core exome products. These are optimized using tag snip content from our Omni family, but they're also customizable. You can add content to these at your will, and you can add our entire exome array content to this to get your human core exome. Not only that, it contains CMV and genotyping data, very important if you're doing genome-wide studies. And I put here that we have early access pricing available through to the end of this year. And so if you're interested in finding out more of this, please come to our booth or our lounge, and we can talk to you about any pricing there. But I want to say that we've, we're enabling pricing for large studies here. We're trying to make the price point attractive to do large genotyping studies. Finishing up here, several months ago, we initiated the MySeq grant program. And the idea was to submit a grant proposal, and three winners would receive a MySeq. They'd receive a certain amount of sample prep and sequencing reagents, and also data analysis and software and storage. And we got, I think, over 800 uh, applications for this. And some of the creativity out there was, was really, really fun. Reading through these was a lot of fun, uh, some interesting ideas. I'm happy to say we're announcing this right now, and the press release, release is going out live to announce the winners. So congratulations to Stephen Doyle and Karen Hark and Ramona Stefanowskis. Stephen's actually from my neck of the woods back in Australia, by no design there. But um, they submitted some really interesting research projects. And um, so I'm not sure if you're in the audience. Uh, otherwise, if, um, we expect to touch base with you soon, and you'll hear about this um, going around the traps. So I'm going to finish there and uh, pass it over to our next speakers. I want to thank you for a fantastic turnout. And without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to David. Thank you.